Today, let us take time to study the Word of God together with the sermon titled, Those Who Are With God. If we look at the history of God's work of salvation in the Bible, we can learn about those whom God was pleased with the most and those whom He entrusted to carry out His great will. They are the ones who always put God at the center of their hearts. In other words, they were those who were always with God. God allowed them to be victorious over their enemies in every war, granted them an inheritance, and bestowed His blessings upon those who were with Him. We can see throughout the 66 books of the Bible that in every situation, God always exalted them. He made their existence to be greater than anyone else and brought them glory in every aspect of their lives. Even today, in this age, God said, I will always be with the people of heaven who are living in this last age to the very end. The promise that He will be with us until the very end contains the meaning that when we are to be blessed, we will be blessed. That when we are to be victorious, we will receive victory. And that when we are to be glorious, we will receive glory. Whatever it is that God promised, He will fulfill it all. Then according to biblical history, what was the outcome of those who were with God? Meaning, those who had God in the center of their hearts. And what about those who were not with God? In Israel, there was a king who loved God very much. His name was David. King David had many sons, and he was concerned about who should be the successor to his throne among his sons. During King David's dynasty, there was Joab, King David's right-hand man, who was a very faithful general, and there was also a priest named Abiathar. Since David was old, they were very concerned as to the plan for his successor. They pondered, who is the right person? There were many eligible candidates around King David. However, God had already decided and said, I will be with Solomon. Even though Joab was a very faithful general who was inseparable from David, when it comes to deciding the successor to the throne, he did not follow the one who was with God. Joab did not look upon Solomon who was with God, but rather he looked favorably upon Adonijah. Joab viewed Solomon by his own human perspective, though God had already chosen Solomon and said, I will be with him. Nevertheless, Joab didn't submit to Solomon, whom God was with, because he only judged him from a physical perspective. Thus, he was unable to correctly realize the one who was truly with God. As a result, both Joab and Adonijah were ultimately put to death. We can clearly see this tragedy unravel from the beginning to the end in the book of 1 Kings. Even today, it is necessary to remind ourselves that we should never forget the importance of the people whom God is with. Even 135,000 soldiers were able to be defeated by only 300 soldiers whom God was with. Such an invisible and amazing work could be achieved through them. The great and amazing power to free a nation from a country, which they had been enslaved to for over 400 years, was granted to those whom God was with. The mighty power to divide the deep water of the Red Sea to become a dry strip of land was granted by God to those who were with Him. This isn't all. Even the great fortified city, which no one was ever able to conquer, collapsed on its own 
without the use of any tools or without anyone even touching it. Such amazing feats were accomplished by those whom God was with. People consider these events to be miracles. However, who was there behind all these miracles? Physically, it might have looked like it was Moses who did it, or Joshua, or Gideon who did it. However, spiritually, it was God who allowed all those things to happen. One common trait about those who were with God is that they were always faithful to God's commands and couldn't even dare to imagine their life without God. This is also the reason why we can see that God said to Noah, Abraham, Apostle Paul, Peter, and all the forefathers of faith, I am always with you. I will be with you. God also told Joshua, I will be with you, so do not be dismayed. I will help you. Not only was everything that they had done already planned, but since God was with them, He Himself carried it all out and fulfilled it all for them. As we see this history recorded in the Bible, we too in this age have received the same promise as they did. This is why the Bible calls us the children of promise. Mother's children are the children of promise, whom God promised to be with. Therefore, wherever we go in this world, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. There is nothing that is impossible. Let us see the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 38. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, then what will happen? It will fail. It will fail on its own, even if it is left alone. Verse 39. But if it is from God, what will you not be able to do? Even if you plot evil and crafty schemes to hinder them, you will not be able to stop these men. What else? You will only find yourself fighting against God. Therefore, isn't the new covenant the truth that can never be destroyed? Why is that? Because it came from whom? It is a promise from God. Since God is with us, Zion cannot fall, and the truth of the new covenant can never be destroyed. Everyone, in this last age, God is with us on every path of the gospel, as well as each of our paths of faith. Hoping that we will never forget the fact that God is with us, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.